Mill and Gristmill's Native Pollinator Garden, an outdoor classroom, habitat, and conservation haven. Newland Gristmill is a nonprofit park and historic site located in Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. We have 160 acres and eight and a half miles of trails, plus historic buildings like a 1704 gristmill, 1739 Miller's house, and a working blacksmith shop. Our organization has a dual mission of historical and environmental conservation and education, and we try to connect those two sides wherever possible. The Native Pollinator Garden is a good example of this connection. The garden itself is located in front of the Visitor Center, which was a railroad station built in 1857. The goals for this garden are to highlight native plant species and the pollinators that rely on them, as well as to support monarch butterfly populations in the park. Education is also a major goal, and we use the garden to teach about native plants and native pollinators, and also as a classroom for broader learning about organisms, ecology, and conservation. We started planning the garden in 2012. Besides needing a location with good growing conditions, we wanted a garden that was centrally located and highly visible. We also needed it to be easily accessible for all members of the public. After surveying various locations in the park, we settled on a minimally maintained existing garden bed in front of the visitor center. With the help of many volunteers, we removed old plantings, added fresh topsoil, and installed new native plants. We also installed a handcrafted trellis for native vines. Following installation, the native plants began to grow and expand. We saw results very quickly with butterflies, honeybees, and flower flies moving in as soon as the plants began to flower. We did initially leave a clump of lamb's ear from the original bed design because of how popular it was with our bumblebees. In our first round of plantings, we had several species that were very popular with pollinators. First is golden alexanders, pictured here, which is in the carrot family. It has parsley-like foliage and small yellow flowers. Um, those flowers produce lots of pollen and nectar and are attractive to lots of different small pollinators like wasps and the 14 spotted lady beetle. It is also a host plant for black swallowtails and is one of the first species to bloom in spring. It brings a bright pop of color to the garden in April and May. Mountain mint is another great pollinator plant which seems to be underutilized despite its attractiveness to pollinators. Honeybees love the tiny flowers, as do butterflies, flower flies, and skippers, including the silver spotted skipper seen on the right here. The species blooms from early summer through fall and offers consistent nectar supplies as other flowers come and go. Our next species is New England aster. This is a fall blooming aster which is a great species for providing nectar at a time when the quantity of blooms in the garden is starting to diminish. It's popular with big pollinators like monarch butterflies, but also with tiny ones like this very small native bee. It is also a popular stop for insectivores like the praying mantid, which makes for great wildlife watching opportunities for visitors when they stop by the garden. The native pollinator garden also hosts several different species of milkweed. In addition to being the host plant for monarch butterflies, lots of solitary bees, bumblebees, and beetles like to feed on milkweed blossoms. We started with butterfly weed, the orange species on the left, but found that it did not like the growing conditions as well as common milkweed in the middle and swamp milkweed on the right. All milkweed species can be identified by their shooting star-shaped flowers and they are all a host plant for the monarch butterfly. Our last species highlight is a plant that surprises a lot of people when they see it. Not everybody realizes that Pennsylvania has its own native cactus. The big yellow blooms of Eastern prickly pear are popular with bumblebees and park visitors, especially kids. And even though it withers in the winter, its uniqueness is still very fun to have around. Our first few rounds of plantings gave us a beautiful garden, but it wasn't quite big enough to fulfill our vision. 
we needed to expand. In 2014, we began expanding outwards towards the parking lot. As with the original plantings, the work was done with volunteers as part of our annual Earth Day celebration. The new expansion was initially sponsored by Yards Brewing Company as part of their pollinator initiative. They donated a seed mix full of flowers that are popular with bees, including Coreopsis and poppies. By July of 2016, we had finished expanding all of the way towards the parking lot. We focused on replacing the non-native flowers from the bee mix with native species like purple coneflower, Coreopsis, Monarda, and Leatris. We also added a central path through the front bed to make maintenance easier and create an immersive experience for visitors. Since 2016, we've worked to increase the diversity of the garden bed by adding new plant species. As we select species, we look for plants that increase the garden's overall bloom time, have different flower shapes and sizes that attract different species of pollinators, and offer overwintering sites like hollow stems and retained foliage. We couldn't do all of this without our dedicated volunteers. In addition to interns and scout groups looking for community service hours, we have several trained volunteers that help to weed, thin plants, and harvest seeds as needed. Ecologically, we manage the garden to support pollinator life cycles. We do not use fertilizers or pesticides, and we rely on natural predators attracted to the garden for pest management. We also mulch heavily with leaves in the early spring, as seen in the picture here. This helps us limit weed growth, but also provides lots of hiding places for pollinators. As the leaves break down, they provide a gentle fertilizer that is easy for the plant's roots to absorb. In the almost 10 years that the garden has been up and running, we have seen an amazing array of pollinators using the site. There have been the usual honeybees, bumblebees, and butterflies, of course, but we've also seen unusual moths, like the snowberry clearwing at the bottom right, and the strangely named beautiful wood nymph that mimics bird droppings. We've also seen a variety of solitary bees, pollinating flies, and wasps, like this tiny blue cuckoo wasp. Lots of other arthropods have moved into the garden too, including milkweed beetles and milkweed bugs, dragonflies, jumping spiders, plant bugs, grasshoppers, tree crickets, bess beetles, and assassin bugs. All of these plants and animals are food for bigger species, so we have lots of other wildlife in the garden as well, including garter snakes, toads, hummingbirds, and song sparrows. This wildlife is very popular with program participants who get to see them up close. Another project that has developed out of the pollinator garden is the Monarch Way Station designation. The garden provides resources that support every stage of the monarch life cycle, from egg to adult. There is abundant milkweed for monarchs to lay eggs on and for caterpillars to feed on. There are also lots of sheltered places where caterpillars can make their chrysalis, as well as fall blooming flowers that provide nectar for adults during their migration in the fall. The monarchs in the garden have given us a chance to do pollinator based outreach. Before the pandemic, we participated in the Monarch Watch program from the University of Kansas. This involves tagging adult monarch butterflies with numbered stickers which help track migration and survivorship. We've been able to get interns involved with the tagging process and introduce members of the public to the conservation challenges facing monarch butterflies. We also participate in the Bee Conservancy's Adopt-A-Hive program, and we've installed a bee house in the garden where each year we raise leafcutter bees and mason bees. The visible nesting sites of these bees help to facilitate conversations about actions that visitors can take at home to protect our native bee species. The garden also serves as an outdoor classroom. 
Some education is passive and uses self-directed signage that helps visitors observe garden features. Other programs, including school field trips and our summer camp, use the garden as a space to meet nature up close. In the picture on the right, summer campers are looking for matching colors in nature as part of a color hunt. They found that the purple coneflower's petals matched their pink square the best. None of this would be possible without community support. Monarch Watch and Yards Brewing Company have both contributed plants and seeds, while the Bee Conservancy provided the materials to kickstart our native bee program. The Hardy Plant Society donated $500 in 2016, and again just recently in 2020. These funds were used to purchase new plant materials to continue to improve the garden's diversity. In 2020, we purchased bluebird aster, common violets, and threadleaf coreopsis. Unfortunately, one month after the new plantings were installed in 2020, the park faced two giant back-to-back -back floods that caused major damage to the site, including the pollinator garden. Most of the plants in the garden were completely flattened by the rushing waters and all of the mulch from the path was washed away. Luckily, thanks to lots of hard work by dedicated volunteers, the garden is back and thriving this summer. Most of the plants sponsored by the Hardy Plant Society survived the floods and have been providing gorgeous blooms this year. After the floods, we had trouble finding enough milkweed near the visitor center for our monarch caterpillars to eat. To make sure this never happens again, we decided to build a new way station far outside of the floodplain. We worked with a local Girl Scout troop this past spring to start a new way station. With funds raised from cookie sales, they helped purchase more common milkweed, mountain mint, and goldenrod and get it planted in the new area. We will continue to develop this garden space over the coming years until it looks as amazing as the native pollinator garden. Thank you for your continued support of the native pollinator garden at Newland Gristmill. We hope you are able to visit in person and see the site for yourself sometime soon.